Evening, ladies and gentlemen, at 6 p.m., Grand Rapids Town Board, Tuesday, August 10th, 2021, 6 p.m., fire station, meeting at the fire station. Just an announcement this evening. Uh, you'll notice the board has three active members here tonight. We had two board members that were unable to be here this evening. We're going to move to two public hearings first before we get into the actual meeting. First item on our agenda is a public hearing for received comment regarding the possible approval of the proposed amendment to the Town Area Rapids Comprehensive Plan for, for Wisconsin Statutes 66.1001, print 4, print D. The update plan will guide the future growth and development of the Town of Grand Rapids and contains the nine elements required by Wisconsin Stats 66.1001. We have Adam Decline here this evening, uh, the county is it planner, do you call yourself, or yeah. just, and uh, he's been assisting our uh, plan commission over the last year plus mm -hmm. to develop the plan. They have it running, they have had drafts, a 70 some page document, and he's gonna give us a quick overview of the board first, and then we'll ask if there's any questions uh, from the public. And he's gonna do it here, so I'm gonna step to the side. Sure. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for that introduction. Like Arnie said, my name is Adam Decline. I'm the county planner. Work for Wood County Planning and Zoning. And as the county planner, I work with the county as a whole to provide uh, community development services and planning services for the county. But I also get the awesome job to work with uh, some of its local municipalities. So over the past a little over a year, I've been working with the Town of Grand Rapids Plan Commission on updating their comprehensive plan. And so tonight, I'm excited to present this final draft of the comprehensive plan for 2021 to the town board and also to the, the public at large. So I'm gonna give a general overview of the plan, the framework of the plan, kind of hit on some highlights of what uh, the town thinks is important in the plan and also the plan commission thinks is important in the plan. And then um, we'll kind of wrap it up here. And if the, um, if the chairman wants to, again, open it up to any public comment to receive comments on the plan, he'll do that uh, at that time. So the Grand Rapids Comprehensive Plan. Comprehensive plan was originally created, well, actually, even before 2009. This 2021 plan is updating the 2009 plan, however. Uh, it's, a, it's a statutory requirement for any communities that are involved with planning and zoning to update their plans every 10 years. So that kind of spurred this update at the Town of Grand Rapids level. Think of this plan as a, as a blueprint for the town's current and future development. Uh, it's, it's a guidance document of sorts. It provides a rationale basis for the town to make land use decisions. Um, the plan assesses the town's needs, its values, priorities, in order to determine specific goals, objectives, and policies. And a draft plan is available for review. It's on the Grand Rapids website. I know the link might be a little bit hard to see here. The plan has been out for comments, out for review for the past, I want to say, at least two months mm -hmm. now. It's been available for, for public comment. Um, so hopefully uh, town members uh, got a chance to take a look mm -hmm. at it. Um, the Town Plan Commission put a lot of time into, into updating that plan. Plan content, I mean, it's called a comprehensive plan. There's a reasoning behind that. It's comprehensive in nature. It's a lengthy document. There's nine elements that are identified in the comprehensive plan. Those elements are identified in state statute. They range from transportation, they, all the way to natural resources. Um, it also hits on land use in the town, economic development, a wide variety of uh, community issues are identified in the comprehensive plan, again, to try to give uh, town elected officials kind of a, a guidance document to follow on how to face their decisions down the road for the next 10 to 20 years. The plan identifies specific goals, objectives, and policies specific to those nine elements. Um, all nine elements have 
I would say, I mean, a handful, 20 to 25 specific policies that are set unique to each of those, um, again, elements. So like transportation, natural resources, land use. Uh, the entire plan, we probably have uh, over um, probably a hundred some specific policies that are identified in the, the plan that um, the plan commission take, took a look at and updated based on largely on, on public input. Uh, there's a lot of maps in the, in the plan to provide visual illustrations to kind of make it easier for the public in, to interpret some of the, some of the information that's uh, presented in it. A lot of tables and figures uh, specific to existing demographics, social characteristics of the town. Just a lot of background information that the town can utilize and reference to base future decisions. Obviously, descriptive component of it, narrative. Overall vision. I'm going to share the overall vision that the plan commission members came up with. I think it's a very good vision. I think you'll all agree that it kind of hits on some of the highlights and importance um, for how the town of Grand Rapids wants to see itself in the future. Again, I'll share with that with you coming up here. Um, another important component is strategies and tools that are identified in the plan. How do we implement these policies, these goals, these ideas that the plan commission came up? How do we get to that desired future in the town of Grand Rapids? Uh, there's a whole chapter specific on uh, tools to accomplish that. And another important com uh, uh, concept or part of the plan is the uh, community survey. This plan was developed uh, largely on the community survey, public input that was uh, collected through the community survey, and uh, public comments that we, re we received in, in the plan commission meetings. And so I'm gonna share the location of that community survey. There's a summary document that's available as well. So that's kind of a general overview of the entire plan in one slide there. But the, the Town Plan Commission, I mean, your Town Plan Commission did an awesome job on updating uh, this 2009 comprehensive plan. Um, some, some of their major duties they oversaw and coordinated the, the uh, development and update of the comprehensive plan. Uh, they took a look at all the nine elements, reviewed them, updated them if they needed reviewing, and it was a huge uh, duty of them and responsibility for the plan commission to gather as much public input as they could to utilize that input in updating this plan and they they tried to foster public uh, participation any means possible you might have seen some of your um, plan commission members at the community picnic obviously they're attending uh, all your plan commission meetings and reaching out to the public putting surveys out but there is a variety of uh, public input on opportunities to update this plan and then um, it was I would say a little over a month ago now that the plan commission did recommend that the town uh, board officially adopt this comprehensive plan they completed updating the plan they have the final draft available and they did with a resolution recommend that the town board uh, adopt the plan you have a list of the plan commission members. Again, a big thank you to all of them. They put a lot of time into this update, a lot of dedication. Uh, they did a great job. They're, they're very um, um, the easy plan commission group to, to work with. I enjoyed working with them. So the vision, I mentioned before, the plan commission came up with a, an overall vision to uh, guide the town of Grand Rapids, you know, towards a desired future for the next 10 to 20 years. This is a long range vision of how the town of Grand Rapids wants to, wants to be in the, the future. And I'm gonna, I mean, I'll read it off here. You can see here too, but I think this is one of the most important ideas that's uh, identified in the plan. But the town's vision for the future is to pre preserve its identity as a suburban rural care community with natural areas and high quality of life for residents while remaining safe, affordable, healthy, and sustainable. The guiding principles to achieve this include providing fiscally responsible governance, dependable town services, and exceptional residential living combined with enhanced recreational opportunities and well-planned growth. So it's kind of a, a lengthy run-on sentence, but the plan commission 
work through the visioning exercise and it took them kind of a long a, a long time to come up with this 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 final vision statement and and overall they did a great job i think it kind of hits on a lot of highlights and the important aspects of the town and specifically what was identified by uh, residents in the community survey for what was important community survey um, this was the, I mean, the most important tool that the plan commission used for incorporating public input into the comprehensive plan. Um, obviously, it's important to ensure that the plan continues to truly reflect what the community wants to see in the town, what the community's needs are, what the residents' desires are. So there was a survey that was sent out to all property owners and all uh, residents that totaled I mean, a little over, we have 3,330 surveys that were um, sent out. The town received um, 1,378 surveys that were returned. So that was a response rate of 41.4%. Uh, so um, a survey sent out, this was sent out in the mail, uh, with a return envelope that was prepaid. 41% point for response rate is a pretty high percentage completion rate for a survey sent out like this. Um, the community survey summary, it is available mm -hmm. online, goes through all of the questions. I wanna say there was, I mean, there was quite a few questions, 25 to 30 some questions that it provides uh, specific breakdowns of the answers to those uh, questions. Another exciting um, update to share with the town of Grand Rapids that came out of this, this comprehensive plan update is I worked with the plan commission to update its zoning map and make that information a little bit more available to the public through an interactive mapping component. So now the town of Grand Rapids is gonna have its own interactive zoning map Prior to this, the town relied on the county land records viewer system. Uh, now the town is gonna be able to share this link or this, this interactive zoning map right on the town webpage and it's gonna be specific to the town of Grand Rapids. So it's their own uh, interactive mapping uh, resource. It's a resource that'll be beneficial to the, the public as well, residents that live in the town of Grand Rapids to easily get access to uh, zoning information online. Just a general overview of the planning process um, like the chairman said, uh, we've been working on this plan update for, uh, I mean, a little over a year, coming up on two years now. And I mean, it takes time working on each of these nine elements. There's a lot of information and updates and data collection that goes into updating these. And obviously the most important component is uh, comments and review from the uh, public. We're reaching the, we're at the end of the planning process here, um, looking at potential action by the town board for plan adoption. Uh, and then we're gonna move on to the implementation uh, component of the plan. And I think I'll touch on that here. So like I said, the town board um, is gonna convene tonight to consider enacting an ordinance, adopting the updated comprehensive plan. Um, but the most important thing to remember here is once the town, if the town does adopt a comprehensive plan, the work's not done with the adoption of the comprehensive plan. Um, it's, it's intended to be implemented over the next 10 to 20 years. It's a long range plan, 10 to 20 years, but there's a lot of short term guidance that's also identified in, in the plan to achieve that desired um, goal 10 to 20 years from now. Um, Again, the town board and town staff, the plan commission, any other committees, commissions can utilize this plan as a reference uh, manual. They need to take a look at the goals, objectives, and policies specific to each of those uh, elements that are identified in the plan to uh, potentially get guidance on how to address community issues. And again, I think it's important to share that that guidance is coming from the public based on a lot of public input. And that's, that's basically all I have, a real general overview of the, the comprehensive plan update. 
I can turn it back over to the chairman. Thank you very much, Adam, and I, I want to extend my thanks to you for all your efforts. I know it was in depth. Is there anybody here this evening that wishes to speak to the plan or questions on the plan real quick? Uh, let see, we don't need to go through anything on that. Okay, then we'll move to our second public hearing. Oh, Could, do you want to do what? In favor or against? Urge the question. Asking in favor or against? I would. No. I, I would. I'd, I'd ask a couple more times just to make sure that. Okay, I guess anybody wishing to speak against it will follow the public hearing rules. Anybody wishing to speak against? Third and final time anyone wish to speak against. Now I'll ask for those anybody wish to speak in favor of. Anybody wish to speak in favor of adopting the plan? Anybody wish to speak in favor of adopting the plan? Hearing nobody wishing to comment, we'll call that public hearing closed. Move to the second public hearing, which is a conditional use permit application for proposal proposed Stryper Chiropractic Link located at 17. 20 Grove Avenue, parcel 0700643A. Do we have a representative here? Yes. Hi. Do you want to uh, add anything to the uh, description of what you're planning to do? Uh, we are a chiropractic clinic that we've been in town for about 10 years um, over on East Grand, and we purchased the Wickersham um, Veterinary Clinic. Uh, when they retired and we are just remodeling that and moving the business to that location. Okay, thank you. Anybody wishing to speak against the conditional use permit? Anybody wish to speak against the conditional use permit for Stoiber Chiropractic Clinic? Anybody wish to speak against? Hearing none, anybody wish to speak in favor of? Second call, anybody wish to speak in favor of? Third and final call, anybody wish to spe speak in favor of Stroiber Chiropractic Clinic, 1720 Grove Avenue, conditional use permit to operate. Hearing none, I'll call that public hearing closed and we'll move to our regular agenda items. First item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I would ask our birthday girl today to lead us with the Pledge of Allegiance, so you'll find out whose birthday it is. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That got you today. Item two, approve agenda. Any questions? Item three, approve minutes from July 13th, 2021, town board. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to approve the minutes of the July 13th meeting. Motion built. Second. Second by Patty. Any discussion, corrections, additions? Hearing none, no calls. All in favor say aye. Aye. I have an aye. Anybody opposed? No opposed. Public comment period, the public may speak to uh, limited two minutes each, public comment limited to 30 minutes total. I would ask that anybody wishing to speak on any other topics other than item 12, if they wish to speak now, I will open up some opportunity for those interested in item 12 to speak when we get to that point. Anybody wish to publicly comment to the board? And nothing, then we'll move on to monthly reports. Uh, first report will be for Fire Chief uh, Robert Pyatt. Good evening, residents, board. Uh, we're currently staffed with 44 fire and EMS members, five non structural, and five are EMS only. Um, anybody, we're always looking for good people. Anybody interested, see me, call me, send a smoke signal. Uh, Anyways, uh, call information for the month. Uh, we had 49 calls for service, 37 for EMS, 12 for fire. Breakdown on there, six calls in Grand Rapids, five in Saratoga, none in Grant. One mutual aid with Nakusa. So those respective numbers from the same time frame last month 
We're up 14 and 58 percent. We had uh, three structure alarms, one wildland brush, three motor vehicle accidents, one mutual aid, two vehicle fires, and one lift assist. Our training information for the last month, EMS did uh, more work to complete our um, work on being able to carry up and effort and nebulizers. And then we also did a drill on firefighter down CPR. Our fire trainings were full structural evolutions where we drafted out of the lake and moved water and did a few other things. Uh, so meeting information, we had one monthly department meeting, one department officer meeting, four training meetings. Our smoke detector is resumed. Uh, we sold one sign last month and there are no injuries to report for the last time frame. Any questions from the board? Bob, would you just maybe update the audience on that smoke detector program, how that's working and who's eligible to have them? Sure. We, uh, we're in that program with the Red Cross where we can put up to three smoke detectors free in anybody's house. Um, it obviously got suspended during COVID, but we're back up and running. All you have to do is stop at the town hall or, or come down to the station. We have a short form. And then uh, I, one of my captains does most of the installing and he'll set up an appointment with you. You come in and you get up to three, three s smoke detectors free, uh, courtesy of the Red Cross. And uh, we said it's of no charge to the homeowner. And the good thing about them is they're 10 year battery life for them. They're nice units. Yeah, yeah, they're Kitta 10 year detectors. We've, we've installed, uh, or I should say Captain Ski has installed uh, over 500 alarms in the general Grand Rapids area in the last few years. So it's definitely, uh, we've installed more per this program than virtually any other department in the state, I think. You're right. According to the Red Cross. Are there any questions for Chief? If not, thank you very much. Mr. All right. We'll call on uh, then, uh, and there was nothing on your safety report, correct? No injuries to report, no. Okay, thank you. Police Department Chief Mel Peterson. Good evening, everyone. For the month of July, uh, the Grand Rapids Police Department handled 383 calls for service, and that compared to 433 calls for service in July of last year. That was about 11.5% decrease in calls, and the board members have a breakdown of uh, those calls. The department issued 78 traffic citations, uh, seven municipal ordinance citations, and 50 written warnings uh, for the month of July. Uh, the Town of Grand Rapids Auxiliary Police had another busy month. Uh, it, July is always the uh, month for the uh, Wisconsin State Water Ski Show Championships hosted by the Aka skiers here at uh, Lake Wazicha at Red Beach. Uh, that was on July 15th through the 18th. Uh, duties included traffic control, crowd control, and ID checks uh, at the, the event. Uh, if you see these uh, uh, volunteer members out in the public uh, uh, at these different events, please uh, give them a, a thank you for the service that they, they provide for our community and for the uh, department. On July 27th, I was invited to be a guest of Sue Sippel. She's the executive director of the Family Center. Uh, on the morning magazine on WFHR AM 1320 radio. Uh, it was a great opportunity to discuss the vital mission that and services provided by the Family Center and the important role that uh, law enforcement uh, plays in supporting that mission uh, here uh, throughout Southwood County. Uh, vehicles department doing well outside of normal routine maintenance and once again if you ever have any questions or concerns uh, feel free to stop by. Questions. Thank you. Any questions for Chief? Hearing none, you may. Treasurer's report, Amy Cook. Good evening. For Good evening. the month of July, current month receipts were 388721 Current month disbursements were 182511 Cash on hand at the end of the month was $1,685,083 with 105604 in checking and $1,274,174 in the repo account with $326,038 in the money market account. Any questions? Any questions? Hearing none, thank you very much. 
move on to uh, additional agenda items. Consider number six. Consider a possible action on a combination Class B liquor license application for Mid State Technical College Incorporated doing business as Gourmet Cafe. Paul Kennedy II, second. Agent. Address 354 Yeoman Court, Nakusa, Wisconsin, for the premise located at 500 32nd Street North, Colorado Grand Rapids. Is there someone from the college that would like to give everybody a little update about the program first? You bet. My name is Chris Severson. I serve as the Executive Dean and Campus Dean for the Wisconsin Rapids uh, Mid-State Technical College campus. And we're extremely excited about the launch uh, of our new Culinary Arts Associate Degree Program. We've spent uh, the last couple years investigating with uh, local job demand, meeting with uh, employers and, and restaurants and hospitality agencies. Um, we know that this community serves that population quite a bit and um, through all of that investigation, we went through the Wisconsin Technical College program approval process and receive program approval a little while back. Um, this program will be launching this fall, and as part of that program, we want to give our students as much hands-on experience in the culinary uh, field as possible. And part of that involves not just kind of a lecture-based classroom, but it involves that hands-on learning in our, in our culinary kitchen, as well as um, what's new to come on campus is a, a, a location called the Gourmet Cafe, and that's really going to be uh, a restaurant for our students to, um, to learn with that hands-on experience. And specifically, the reason why we're asking for this license is um, we know that these, these students uh, will go out and, and become skilled workers in the workforce and work for one of our um, local restaurants. Uh, our goal is that they understand responsible beverage service. And as part of that, uh, we want to um, give them the training and guidance necessary in, in doing that. So as part of our curriculum, um, that is embedded in our curriculum, which again is why we're asking for um, the license. Thank you very much. Board members, do you have any questions of them or, are you, or is one of you uh, willing to present a motion, one or the other? I just have one question. Sure, go ahead, Patty. Um, in regards to the liquor license, is it that you are going to be serving alcohol in the gourmet cook um, restaurant, or is it mainly like cooking with it? Yeah, it, it will be both. Okay. So we, you know, as part of that training of our students in responsible beverage, there will be service of alcohol, but it will be <coughs> in conjunction with service of food with the restaurant we're, we're anticipating, just based on uh, student enrollment, we're anticipating the restaurant being open for a couple hours each week, maybe a couple days a week. Uh, and that will, be, uh, that will be with, you know, community participants being able to come on campus and, and uh, participate at the morning academy. That was my next question, was your hours of service is what you anticipate. So couple days a week. Absolutely. I mean, really, the, the, the hours are only going to be dictated around uh, student training. Okay. So when, when, when classes are in session and we need students to train on um, the variety of skills in the curriculum, uh, the Gourmet Cafe will be open specifically for that reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Thank you. So any other questions? I'll make a motion to approve. Mr. Kleinani is making a motion to approve the Class B liquor license application for Mid-State Technical College. Is there a second? I can second. Thank you, Patty. Is there any board discussion? Um, and with the liquor license, is there any other leftover liquor license after this? They or have our last one. That's, that's what I thought. We were yep, down to one. one. <laughs> so, yeah, very good. Any other discussion? If not, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I'm an aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Your motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse us. We'll give you a second to go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item 7, consider a possible action ordinance 2021-15, comprehensive plan amendment and update to the town of Grand Rapids comprehensive plan. 
I just have one uh, yeah, just comment, comment. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah. and that is I, I think the background was great uh, during the presentation just one other uh, mention that uh, you may recall that you did approve a public participation plan uh, it had public participation beyond that which is statutorily required uh, and we have uh, done all of those public participation opportunities uh, to gather input for the plan. Thank you, Nick. All right, I'd be very proud to uh, uh, offer a recommendation to the board to approve Ordinance 2021-15. And I can second. Motion by Nystrom, second by Lumbee. Any other discussion? I would like to just um, acknowledge um, Nick Flanagan also having involvement of the comprehensive plan along with Peggy Doughty, our um, plan commission secretary. And I really want to say that 41.4% of the town residents had input with the survey and I um, appreciate their input on that too. And um, Adam, I just want to say that your guidance was so professional and very knowledgeable, and we appreciate your input and guidance on it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments, William? Yes, thank you. And I, I'd like to just say that I was around for the first one, the 2009 one, and, uh, and the job that was done, I think I attended all but one of these meetings for it. I'm not on the plan commission, but I see that are two members of the plan commission here you know, and then i think they did an outstanding job and uh, being with the towns association uh, a lot of questions were asked of me about how many he, um, that adam had done and what kind of a job he did and we highly recommend it <clears throat> thank you for your comments Is there anything else Hearing no other comments called for, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No opposed. Motion carries. Item 8. Consideration and possible action on resolution 2021-20. Could issue use permit application for proposed Stryberg Chiropractic Clinic located at 1720 Grove Avenue, parcel 0700643A. What's your wishes? I'll make a motion to approve um, the conditional use permit application for a proposed Stoiber Chiropractic Clinic located at 1720 Grove Avenue, parcel number 0700643A. Motion by Patty. Seconded. By William. Any other discussion? I just want to say that I'm glad that you're taking over that building. It's going to be a perfect area for your business, and I wish you well. Thank you. Thank you for coming to Wisconsin. <laughs> Any other discussions? Here, none. All in favor say aye. 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 I'm an aye. Anybody opposed? No opposed. Motion carries. Congratulations. Number nine, consider a possible action on resolution 2021-21. Certified survey map for Roosh Land Development LLC, four lots, pursuits of stats 51.7, road dedication as presented, parcel 0701-003. Anything you need to update us from the Plan Commission, Patty, or not? Well, I'm going to let Nick, Nick, because of the fact I think there was probably something that transposed Great. after the meeting last night? Yeah, well, okay. so I'll start by saying that I believe a representative uh, is here uh, this evening, so uh, just to, to recognize him and, and provide him the opportunity to provide any additional information. Uh, related to numbers 9, 10, and 11, uh, they're all uh, similar requests. Uh, number 9, however, uh, was for, I believe you have a map in your packet, uh, lots 1 through 4, uh, that has been withdrawn. And so the request for uh, number nine, unless I, I hear differently from the representative, the request for number nine for lots numbers one through four uh, has been withdrawn. So I would like that for Leah, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So that leaves two lots then? Uh, nope, it, it leaves, so the balance of that is three lots. Um, okay. So just to show you on your, uh, I believe you have these, maybe not. So this this is the CSM that was withdrawn. 
counts one through four. There are the balance is two CSMs. This is actually the master map, yeah. so this is maybe an easier way of, of okay. seeing it. One through four at the top was withdrawn, the balance being these three bo bottom lots in two CSMs. Okay. You have that as numbers 10 and 11. Bill, 10 and 11. So number nine is totally withdrawn, is that what I Yes. Okay, that's so correct. Nine is a non-action item. Then we'll move to, uh, uh, that would be item 10 on our agenda. Consider possible action, this is resolution 2021-22. Certified survey apps, roof development, LLC, creating two lots, pursuits 51.7, road dedication as shown, parcel 07, 0103. Now I have one other thing to mention since we do have a county uh, representative as well. Uh, so this uh, this and number 11 was uh, considered by the Planning Commission at uh, yesterday's meeting. Uh, both of these items were recommended uh, to the town board for approval with the condition that it uh, also passed the county's approval because that is a part of our ordinance. Um, has, has the county uh, given a position on the th balance, so the three lots. As far as I know, yes. I was kind of thrown at this okay, four o'clock today, so okay. we get all the ins and outs. <laughs> and I can speak to um, pulling the proposed four lot CSM uh, would now bring uh, the two other certified survey maps that are under action tonight into conformance with the, the Wood County Land Subdivision Ordinance. So our office would consider approval of those two certified survey maps as well. Thank you. I will make a motion to approve. Bill's motion is to approve resolution 2021-22. Yes. Seconded by? Me. <laughs> Patty. How do you write me in that? <laughs> Seconded by Patty. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. I have an aye. Anybody opposed? No opposed. Thank you. Item 11. Consider uh, possible action on resolution 2021 23. Certified survey map for Roost Development LLC, creating one lot, pursuant to statutes. 51.7, road dedication as presented, parcel 0701003. I'll <coughs> make a motion to oh. approve. Oh. Motion by Patty to approve. Right, because it, it's pretty much what part of the... 10. Okay. Second. By William. Any other discussion? Um, so we don't have to... So what I understand then, and Adam is here to say that Wood County has accepted them. I just want to make sure... I don't know if they've officially accepted. So. But I mean, it's it complies to their right. Complies to right. Okay. So the condition was really to satisfy the item in our ordinance that it uh, is consistent with the county's uh, ordinance, and okay. I believe we've heard that it is uh, okay. with with now the balance of those with those three lots remaining. It okay. is consistent. Okay. Correct. Yes. I, I mean, I don't have to go into great details but the long and the short of it from the county's ordinance perspective a property owner thereof or its agent is only allowed to create uh, four lots by certified survey map if you propose more than four lots that requires a subdivision plat so i believe the action that you took tonight approved three total lots by csm therefore that would make it in conformance with the county's uh, ordinance as well Thank you for that explanation. Any other discussion? Here, none. All in favor say aye. 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 Everybody opposed? No opposed. Item 12. This is going to be considerable possible action and resolution 2021 24, which is in draft mode. A referendum calling for advisory non binding referendum question to solicit public input regarding usage of AT all terrain vehicles and UTV. On town roads in the town of Grand Rapids, Wood County, Wisconsin, I'm going to ask Nick to give a 
a little update first. Well, wait, excuse me. I, I, I remembered I was going to allow you people in the audience that wish to speak to the topic to go ahead and speak. And we can speak, um, you know, for 10 to 15 minutes, but if you get into repetition, then I guess we've probably got everything we need to know. Is there anybody uh, wishing to speak? Go ahead, Mr. Johnson. Well, I just sat here and you went over this uh, comprehensive plan that you all spoke well of and said that it had a 41.4% response rate. The flyer that was handed out today says that uh, you want to have enhanced recreational opportunities. That could be ATV and UTVing. And you spoke about the public input and how good it was, but when it comes to the question that asked about opening up the roads, apparently that doesn't matter to this board. So why does part of the survey count and part of the survey not count? You, you, you've got the opinion of the citizens, now you want to have a referendum. It's redundant. Okay, we got your point. Anybody else wish to speak? This, is, this isn't a across the table. This is correct, your time. correct. That's why I'm not responding. <clears throat> Anybody else wishing to speak on it? Go ahead, sir, in the back. Yes. Your um, name for the record? Uh, Jeremy Plaza. Um, uh, just a few points I wanted to bring up. I don't know if this maybe should have been sooner or later, but um, I know one of the concerns was noise on the uh, ATVs, UTVs. Um, typically, anyone that's factory manufactured is no louder than an automobile. So, I mean, if you hear a car drive by, the engine noise, exhaust noise should be no louder than an automobile. So, I mean, unless someone's modified it and there's laws against that, which you guys all know, um, that shouldn't be a concern. Um, the overwhelming majority, I called a couple of the local dealers, and um, our, the overwhelming majority of the people that purchase these are 50 plus years old. A lot of retired people, people in their 70s and 80s. So I think that would also make you think that it's going to be more people driving it easy, taking it easy. Um, you know, these things are, especially the UTVs are nice because you stay out of the elements. So, um, you know, you're not, I mean, I do snowmobile, but, you know, you can, you're kind of confined in it and stuff. So, you know, as far as that part goes, I think that's part of the popularity of it. Um, there are more of them registered in the state of Wisconsin than snowmobiles. So, you know, I think it's an important thing uh, just because of the, the sheer volume of them. Um, Just uh, one of the things I looked up in your own laws or rules in Grand Rapids is for snowmobiles, it says you must take the most direct route to the trails. So if we, when we get to that point, if you didn't want to open up every road all the time, you could say, okay, you can leave your house and you have to take the most direct route to get to the trails you want, just like we're doing with the snowmobiles now. Okay. Uh, you're just about out of time. So okay, wrap up. one more thing. Um, um, we know 80th Street, one direction is open to Grant, and the other one isn't. And I know you guys aren't really being sticklers on that, but I guess that is kind of like maybe something that's showing you that it's not a big issue because, I mean, there has been a bunch of crashes or something, and that's a heavily populated road with a lot of traffic, and they seem to be doing okay there. Okay, thank you for your comment. Anybody sure. else? Now, then we'll move to uh, a Nick. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, I didn't yeah, see yeah. I, I think this is a good way to go as a referendum. So, um, the voting Grand Rapids residents uh, uh, can have a choice in what they want to see here with these ATVs and UTVs. So, um, I think I think all the voters should be able to make a decision on this. Good. Thank you. Go ahead, ma'am. Name. I think it's wonderful that uh, the people have had an opportunity to vote, but uh, the survey that was presented, you know, you say it's it's not um, the majority. Although, if you really look at it, it looks pretty darn good. Um, I don't really. I sat through several meetings, and I still have not figured out why you guys don't want. To have ATV UTVs. It'll bring in business. You have more people visiting. 
I, I, you know, this voting uh, is going to cost. And I would like to hear more after you uh, describe the non-binding. Thank you for your comment. Anybody else wishing to comment? Go ahead, sir. Just a question. Sir, can um, you just say your name, please? I'm sorry, Jim okay. Bingham? It's not questions. You're going to make a comment, sir. Okay, maybe both. Um, at uh, the local ATV dealer over on 54 has over 400 orders. I realize they're not all from Grand Rapids, but you can see the popularity <coughs> and where this thing is going. So in your long range plan, is that part of your plan to take care of these things? Thank you for your comment. Anybody else? All right, thank you very much. We'll move on over to our, our attorney. We'll give you a little update where we are. Uh, the clerk will give you some cost figures of what a uh, referendum costs. We'll go from there. Okay, thank you. Um, so at the last legislative committee meeting, I was directed by the legislative committee uh, to prepare the necessary documents for placing a referendum question uh, on the ballot for a future election. Uh, that question specifically being uh, tied to the usage of ATVs, UTVs on town roads. I say specifically, but really, uh, as you'll hear in a moment, uh, I haven't proposed a question because that is, of course, uh, the board's decision. Uh, so before you this evening is a draft resolution, as was stated. Uh, that draft resolution is what's necessary to effectuate a, a question uh, being placed on the ballot of a future election. I keep saying future election because that also is a decision uh, by you all uh, as to when that election is. Uh, so uh, this ordinance, or sorry, this resolution, uh, if you will, has everything that you need to place uh, a question on the ballot, except you'll need to fill in the question and you'll need to direct on when that uh, election is to take place. Is it the next general election? Is it a special election? To help with question uh, development, uh, as I stated at the last legislative committee meeting, uh, I have uh, compiled a list of referendum question examples that have been used uh, in the state of Wisconsin. And so I believe I had uh, sent forth uh, 16 uh, examples. You can use one of those, you can use a hybrid of them, whatever you decide to ask. Uh, is is up to you and the direction that you give uh, and so in possible adoption of the resolution I will need uh, a direction on the date and direction on the question okay, thank you and the, the question has been asked several times is what does a uh, referendum question cost um, maybe we should go back and uh, the term non-binding is, is uh, made some misunderstandings, maybe somewhat, but, but where most agendas except in rare occasions are non-binding to a board, is that correct? Yeah, there's, there's a number of different uh, referendum types, uh, three exactly. Um, one is an advisory referendum, one is what's termed a petition referendum, one is what's termed a binding referendum. An advisory referendum is the non-binding. When you see non-binding, that's what an advisory referendum is. Uh, that is intended to provide uh, some input uh, to the board uh, on a, a question of interest, right, or a topic of interest. A petition referendum, I can rule that out pretty quickly because petition referendums typically relate to either the forced adoption of an ordinance or the changing of an ordinance, but it's only going to be applicable in cities and villages, so it's, it's a non-issue here. A binding referendum is, as the chairman pointed out, a binding uh, one. Uh, it is not as commonly used. Uh, you'll see binding referendums where it's actually required, typically, meaning, uh, for example, in certain municipalities uh, where somebody or a municipality wants to go from a elected clerk or treasurer to an appointed clerk or treasurer they adopt an ordinance they set it for a referendum and then uh, the 
decision uh, of the people is what's binding uh, to the direction that, uh, that the governing body takes. Uh, you also see that sometimes with uh, some municipalities and exceeding levy limits, but that's a, a bit of a more complex issue because there's also some ability to uh, do it at the uh, town meeting. Um, those are the three types of referendums. When, it, when you hear non-binding, it's because that is the direction I was given at the last legislative committee meeting. I specifically asked if an advisory referendum is what the board wanted. I was told advisory referendum is what I was to prepare a document for. The advisory referendum is the non-binding referendum. Thank you, Nick. Uh, the earliest possible date that we uh, figured the, out. Yeah, the earliest would be. Go ahead, then you can talk about the cost then. Too. Okay. For the all the guidelines for dates and everything, it's about a three month time frame. That would be the minimum we could do would be three months. And that's, I mean, that's moving really, really quickly. Um, as far as costs go, so on a normal election, the county pays for all of our ballots and everything. If we do a special election, that cost all falls on us, which would be 2778 for just the ballots that we would owe to the county. And then for publishing notices, um, absentee postage costs, the election workers' wages, um, printing of poll books, et cetera, we'd be looking at a total of, and this is an estimate obviously, of $9,278 to hold a special election. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, and the next general election scheduled is 4-5 of 2022. Somebody says government runs slow, and it does. And a lot of money for, but you have to remember a lot of the costs are in now ballots that are being requested because of the whole COVID thing. Dollar and 20 cents each ballot that goes out. Adds up. All right. The board is holding the meeting now. It's not public comment period. All right. So in reality, it looks to, to me that the best thing for you is because it's going to be way into November before it could even happen, the extensive cost. I think we should move it to the spring election, have it on the spring election. So that would be my recommendation. And I, as far as the questions go, um, you can, uh, if you want to talk about some discussion on the questions uh, now or. Is that a motion for you? Yeah, I would make the motion that we move it to the spring election. Is there a second? No second? I'll second that. Motion, motion seconded. Discussions? So are we going to, um, so as an example, Jeremy and Amber are not at this meeting. It's very unfortunate they were unable to right. be. And both of them were very passionate about being involved and making a decision on this. Yes, I have a solution if you okay. would like me to. Sure, that's why I I, I would discussion. suggest that we set the date of the resolution, we get everything in, in action, we'll bring this to us, have Nick bring this to us in a draft with that language on it. At that time, we could amend that resolution from whatever discussions we have amongst the board. With the questions? With the questions. The questions. That we could fill in the questions that evening then. So they'll be able to have input. Yes, that would be my way that they could Next have input. meeting. William? We can have discussions with them. You know, I, I, I not only think that it's important that they be here for that, even for for discussion whether it should be in the spring election or three months from now or four months from now. You know, I, I think they should have been in on that discussion. So since, since the motion is there to for the spring election, I would like to make a motion to table this issue until our next meeting so they get a chance to discuss it convince us on some things. Is that out of order? No, or motion to the table is in order at any time. 
and, and I didn't give up a, a place which would be at the next meeting. Because then we could possibly have it as, because the current motion that's on the floor would indicate that it would be only held at the spring election, but by um, changing the date, there could still be a possibility of a special election. Is that what I'm hearing from you, Bill? It could be. Okay. I, I'd like to see them right. on, on the, it, it, it could be. Um, you know, this is the first time that I have not gotten calls for or against it, you, you know, from people. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I wonder, you know, why that is. And, you know, because you, you, usually I get calls and, 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 and talk to people on it, but they're not included in this discussion, mm -hmm. you know. Today, what was brought up, you know, they may convince us to have it in three months. They may convince us of, about the ordinance and the questions on it. Mm -hmm. I, that's why I think they should be more involved. Was there a second? No, for rules, no. no. Mm -hmm. um, I just want a clarification then on your motion then, that with your motion that you have, there could be a possibility it could go special election or spring election, correct? I mean, whatever Correct. the decision Correct. is Correct. with them it, it coming could, up. Yes. Okay. I will second that motion. Okay, so there's no discussion on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion to move it to the next agenda item. It has been tabled. To the next meeting. To the next, next meeting. Well, that got nowhere. Happy birthday, it's my birthday too. Oh, well, <laughs> what, what bar are you going to? I'm from <laughs> Thanks, Tom, for coming. We ask you folks if you're leaving to please leave so that we can continue our meeting. Thanks, Tom, for coming. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> It's great. Right. I'll get in touch with you. Yes, yeah. yeah. He should have. Oops. He should have my email. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Did you? I think you went the wrong door. Oh, I didn't have my salary in my teeth the whole time. Okay. <laughs> no. Welcome back. It's like a bulldog. Yes. It's like a bulldog. I know. That's gone. Oh, I missed it. All right, where were we? We're on number 13. Consider the possible action of purchasing uh, law enforcement squad. We have the uh, uh, last estimate from Kaiser, which this vehicle is in stock, correct? The, at that time, they were correct. Yes. And uh, that's at $35,000. That uh, gives the $5,240 municipal discount. Uh, this was approved at the last in our loan when we made the loan applications. And I was just looking for confirmation to confirm that he could go ahead and get the squad in. So can I, um, wasn't at that meeting when we were talking about the squad, um, when Dan Paulson was here on the board, there was talk about if we went with body cams that this squad wouldn't be purchased 
there was that conversation. Did we ever go with the body cams? No, no, we don't have body cams. The squad was approved at budget okay. time. Okay, I, I just remembered that part, yeah. and I just didn't know about that. Yeah. And I do remember um, the squad being approved, but and I thought it was if we went with body cams, we would not be getting the squad. So I just wanted clarification on that. Okay. I make a motion for the go ahead. Motion by William, second by Patty. Patty. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. I have an aye. Anybody opposed? No opposed. Motion carries. Item 14 is a training request for Tammy Kabishik to go to a DCI Death Investigation School. Approximate cost of $1,000. And that's what dates? Uh, September 13th to the 17th and the 20th through the 24th is an 80 hour course. I'll make a motion to approve the training request. <coughs> Excuse me, motion by Bill. I can second. Second by Patty. Any other discussion? Trainings are important, especially one that is this sensitive. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, but aye, but opposed? No opposed. Just a quick update on sure. that, Arnie. Uh, we just found out last week her name's been put on a waiting list for that class. Oh. They're, they're very popular and they're hard to get into. Uh, so uh, I still wanted to get it approved. Sure. So if her name does come up, if people drop out and her name does come out, she's authorized to go. Okay, so as, as of right now, her name's on a waiting list. So. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Great opposed? No opposed. Uh, item 15, consider possible action on who will be attending the WA convention. I guess William, you've uh, indicated it's correct. Yes. Uh, Lisa and Amy have indicated that they would like to go to try to uh, some courses or some classes there that, are, that look good to them, plus the chance to meet with some uh, vendors pertaining to the accounting software. And he said, all right, I usually get my own room and I get it at a discount because of military. And it's usually. As long as it's, it's under the 84, whatever the state approved amount is below, below that, then it's fine. You don't have to stay in the, in the resort hotel as long as the rate is the same or better. Do I get the difference if it's no. much less? No. <laughs> Well, I don't know. <laughs> didn't, it, didn't it used to be at the colony? Well, I won't talk about how they how they operated. Here's the quote. All favor say aye. Aye. I'm an aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody else wishing to go? Uh, you have until. I don't think we had a second on that, did we? I didn't write down a second. I didn't say second, okay. but I'll second. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. sorry. I was, no, that's okay. I was, I was just assuming you were doing everything. Yeah. Yeah. I thought the discussion was still going. The motion was made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, I'm sorry. I missed that. Thank you for being on my toes. Mm -hmm. uh, 16. Consider possible action on removing the pile of black up at the town garage. So we have a couple of quotes here now, and then I shared a uh, little bit of information with Patty this afternoon by text. I didn't copy anybody else in on it, Bill, but what I did offer is uh, Rick has indicated that we could may as well just open up that secondary gate, which is back through the, the piles. Uh, if you want, you could have that as your exit gate or your entrance gate, whatever worked better for you, and that would uh, then leave some additional parking that may be accessible for you than you had in the past. So go ahead, Patty, on your right. discussion. So this black um, tar gravel pile that milling is, millings is millings, what they were. Yeah. that is there has been um, there for quite some time and actually hard set itself and so um, it's laid on a blacktop driveway um, going in it's like a second or third actual driveway to the um, town garage so um, in order to help with the safety aspect and um, traffic flow, um, we were tasked by um, our police chief to come up with a different plan of how we could maybe alleviate some of the backup traffic. And so by 
being able to remove those um, piles, it would open up that driveway. Um, the recycling solid waste took a look at that and it would open up that driveway, which would be another entrance or exit. We haven't figured the traffic flow yet um, to alleviate the um, flow of traffic out on Two Mile Avenue. So um, at first when I approached um, one of our locals to have that removed, um, they gave us a quote and I had heard that, you know, I had asked him to quote it to have it removed. But then I came to learn that it's actual a project that is earmarked, that Millings is earmarked for a base of a culvert for 32nd Street whenever that comes about. So with that being said, I did ask about how about if we um, don't remove it, how much would it cost just to break it up? So there would still be three entrances or three driveways we could use as exit or entrances. Um, and to be able to do that, just to break it apart, it's approximately $145 per hour. And then um, if we utilize their truck, you can see per their quote what the rate would be if we utilize their truck. But if we would use our truck, of course, there would be just the, you know, I wouldn't say cost because there's always cost for moving equipment around, but it would be less. And I'm not quite sure if a person would break up that pile and just move it so that we could utilize that driveway one as a, another means of being able to move the traffic better. Um, I don't know if once we break it up and move it, we'd still move it on the same piece of property but off of a driveway um, if it would harden up again. I don't know that fact, but in the meantime, if we would even break it up, and let's say it's in bigger chunks and it's not to the standards of the road base for the culvert, we could still break it up one more time. It wouldn't be as time consuming when the project did arrive to do. So. And then the other variable would be the blacktop was below it. Did it adhere to that blacktop below it? No. Yeah. Don't, don't know. know. Don't know. But um, I don't know, of course, and we can't answer that uh, about when the 32nd Street culvert is going to be fixed. I don't know if that's... It's, I, I can tell you that it would be in the town's 10-year plan right. timeline. There was actually a design drawn up for that uh, uh, back when Tom Buss was chairman. Uh, I spent know, some money on it. And it was pretty expensive back then. It was pretty close to a multi-million dollar project to raise that uh, culvert up on uh, the Bloody Run Creek from between Deer and Timberline. Timber, Timber Valley Road. Uh, but anyway, the, the uh, Urban Towns uh, Committee uh, last year put 32nd Street into the area. So we just had our most recent uh, Urban Towns yes, and, 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 uh, and uh, advanced two city projects for that. But that does, does leave it open for us for the coming two years down the road again to, uh, if we would want to study this a little bit, get a little better design and then put a request in for that to be part of the funding for the, it would be probably 2025 projects that would be rewarded. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's still a guess as to whether it would be not. Sooner or later, we know that that culvert being a metal one is going to fail. Fatigue, yeah. And, but with that being said, on the 10-year project, I'd still like to be able to utilize that third driveway. I think, you know, because even if we use it as an entrance coming in, they're driving amongst rock piles and things like that, which I don't think that will be a problem. Um, but I can still see that just to still alleviate traffic flow, because we did one year use that middle driveway and it worked super slick with um, 
traffic flow. Mm -hmm. So I would like to make a motion to approve um, the breaking of the um, black pile or the piles in question um, on the rate per hour leaving the millings on the property but just moving it off of that driveway because it doesn't sound as if we're going to be doing that project soon. Um, if I could have a second with that, based on this quote. Motion has been made. Is there a second? No motion coming forward. Right. So, um, if you would, uh, uh, we don't actually need a motion to use that gate. We can make that other gate available for you. Right. And then you guys can look at your design plans and see whether that would work as uh, a better way to bring the vehicles in or out. You can look that over and go from there. Okay, moving on to uh, 17 uh, July disbursement vouchers. Uh, we did email everybody the uh, per diem request. So oh, yes. You should have gotten those correct. time that we would actually talk being that we approve the vouchers would this be the time that we'd actually talk about the meetings that were attended by supervisors uh, on the vouchers you know like yeah, exact, I'm interested in the yeah. one that you had gone to yeah I can tell you about that uh, I, and I was going to in my my notes okay. afterwards so that would probably be more appropriate yeah. at that time. And, and what in reality is those vouchers aren't in these vouchers we're approving. That's true. They're in next month's next vouchers. Month, yeah. That's the idiosyncrasy of how this is looked at. Mm -hmm. Whether when we get back at the legislature, we figure out a better way to do this. Okay. It might be more convenient, but certainly. Sure. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, no discussions. Everything is pay the bills. Uh, no operator license applications? Mm -hmm. Nope, you've got some in there. Was? Mm -hmm. Where? Mm -hmm. I gave everybody. Thanks, Oh, Nick. no, I think I've got all the copies. Oh, okay. he's got it. Okay. Yeah, I have all the copies. Oh, you have all of them? Oh, I have all, all of them. Oh, the, the one. Ones. Ones. No, you don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering why I had three copies of 18. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, Sandra Bishop, the store, Sarah Jean Brown, Jammers, Nancy Rawlingston, Jammers. Uh, Sierra Schindler, Jammers, uh, Isaiah Sylvester, Butts Corner Mark for one year, no two years, no denials. I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Motion by Patty. Second. By William. Hearing no discussion, all in favor say aye. Aye. Bye -bye. Individual reports, public works. Huh. Glad to say that uh, asphalt pro uh, paving is done. Uh, shouldering will follow up soon. Uh, we have a full crew back to work as you're well aware of, I hope, uh, again. And... Uh, Can I ask you a question? Yeah. The thickness of the blacktop on 32nd Street. Should be a two and a half inch finished. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's after compression? Yeah, should have been two and a half or thereabouts. Sometimes it depends on how heavy the grader is for the street sweeper and what they, maybe it's two and a half compressed to two, maybe. Maybe that's what <coughs> I it think is. Maybe that's what I it think is. That's what two and a half, two and a half right. compressed to two. I stand corrected. And then did, um, talking about 32nd Street, was, um, were the, um, shoulders, blacktop, or gravel, or combination no, of we got, and how we, wet? We got, uh, we have some shoulder for walking, yes. Okay. Yeah, there'll be about uh, uh, two and a half foot paved shoulder rather than the three to, in order to fit it into the platform of how it was laid out without having to do a lot of ditching and re other stuff. We were able to get a two and a half foot walk path okay. and that'll be, it'll be lined that way. 
okay, with the so white lines. Yeah, so it is two and a half inch paved, and then will you do another and half inch of gravel? Shoulder. Well, yeah, there'll be some shoulder on the material besides, yes. Okay. Okay, uh, Airport Commission. Uh, we had representatives on hand from MSA Professional Services and the Bureau of Aeronautics attended and gave us updates. Uh, uh, I was a little bit ill but did attend via phone. Uh, MSA is the designer of our fuel system uh, improvement, uh, which was approved by Madison. Uh, that process will now start in late, late fall or early January due to the availability of component trees and cabinets and pumps that are just so severely short in supply right now. Uh, the B Bureau of Aeronautics uh, updated uh, the commissioners and, and anybody else that was there about the process of where we're cleaning our uh, height safety zones and it's primarily in the area that would be uh, uh, at the north of our 02 runway near Pepper Street and, and first uh, we have to maintain a clear vision of height radiation in order to have our, uh, our uh, safety in place. And it's going to require some trees to be either trimmed mm -hmm. or removed and it's a three to a five year process when the Bureau does this because they have to survey them first, find out which trees are affected, they have to purchase the rights, the easement rights from the property owners yeah. to, to go through this. So it takes time and you can always have maybe one or two that are not acceptable and those may actually end up in court. So that's why they're saying for anywhere from three to a five year process to do this. And uh, that is gonna go forward. Fuel sales were actually down this last month comparable to 2019 by a couple thousand gallons. Didn't have quite as much jet traffic in. But so far this month, jet traffic is way up compared to what we were last August. So I guess it's just the ebb and tide of who's coming in. And we had several, several businesses that were in with business planes. Uh, this time was more than, more than usual. And uh, uh, I did also produce in your trays the 20 or the 2021. 20, 2020 report from from the airport. Mm -hmm. uh, if we want to share that in our documents at the annual meeting, we could do that, or we could mm -hmm. we could have that brought up at that point in time too. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? When I was reading that report, um, they referenced um, the runways being updated to be able to handle, and I cannot recall the name of the jet. It or Gulf Streams. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is I don't know the size of that. Is that like on the upper end or where does yeah. that fall for that size jet? Uh, of business jet, it is the second biggest, we can handle the second biggest business jet. Okay. That's a Gulfstream G650. There's a Gulfstream G700, mm -hmm. which is bigger yet, but that requires a longer runway than right. we have. Our runway is 5,500 feet, and that uh, meets the standards for Gulfstream 6.5 and below, and all the Falcons and all the other models that okay. are, that are commercially uh, piloted. And these planes are typically set up for uh, 12 to 16 or 20 people at the max. The same size jet that comes in a Falcon uh, 900 or 9,000, I'm sure, is what CWA uses to uh, put 50 people in when they go to Minneapolis or Detroit. Okay. So that's the size of the plane that can land there now. And our hangar is big enough to hold the biggest golf screen <laughs> other than the G7. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. All right, we'll move on to go with William Recycling Solid Waste. Okay, well, we had a meeting on the 19th and there were several things on it and I just thought it would be in, but I, I I guess I didn't get it on the agenda. Uh, we're doing a study, was done a 50 year study on uh, 71st Street down the, from um, Calendar Road to 71st Street 
going down that way all the way to the lake and uh, the 50 year study was done and we had a meeting with several people uh, from the county and they're still working on it and the town of the village of Port Edwards and it, it was a very interesting meeting and I'm working with the county on seeing about you know if that's a legal document of 50 years uh, you you have gotten a copy of it too so working on that and you know, what we should do about it you know there's items discussed on it also so I I will put it on the agenda for the next meeting on that I didn't uh, I wasn't aware that you were looking for board permission just to find out if it was okay to to uh, inquire about it because there was no money going to be expired by the town so I don't know that you'd actually have to. Um, well that's not yeah. that's not what meetings are all about I, I don't think you can I don't think you can have a meeting and do anything without the board approving what you did at that meeting I mean that's the way it has been that's the way it is on the county board I know it hasn't been that way here but I, I know committees from the town of Grand Rapids do things and then they just go out and do them and you don't have permission to do them and the board has to approve Basically, and I know you said to me, if well, the board, minutes aren't approved. And the minutes aren't approved when we go through the seven uh, committees on the county board. They're not approved either, you know, but we go over them. Sometimes it's not even on the, it's on the agenda, but then we do, somebody disapproves of what the committee does and overturns it and so on. It's just. Well, that's yeah. the idiosyncrasies of, of, of meeting minutes is they're technically not approved until after that committee approves them. And whether that's right or wrong, that's just the way government works. But I mean, certainly if you'd have said something, Bill, you wanted an action item on there, I would have had it on there. So I, I wanted the minutes on there. I, I think the minutes should be in our packet from every meeting. Then we know what went on, and that, that's the way it has been. So, okay, we can we'll, talk about we'll talk that. We'll talk about legislative. Legislative meeting. Okay. Right. Anything else? Well, um, yes. Uh, since water is on there, water is is a big issue now. Uh, I have a couple of neighbors that are yelling about it. I have the situation over on 64th Street. The uh, people have 11 inches of water in their basement on that pipe that we did, and I I, I learned today that there's an obstruction in that pipe and. I don't know how somebody knows that, so I, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't know how anybody would know that. It's, yeah. a friend, it's a friend of yours that knows uh, that. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. I, I can tell you that there is so much water flowing down it, it's back feeding to one of our, our, uh, our uh, uh, French drains on 64th Street down by Wazicha. But it's work. Now, now, this person told me there was a sound done on it, and and it's where the it crosses 64th Street and goes on the other side, right in that crossing underneath the road. It's bad. I never heard that. No, but, and I haven't. But I, that's uh, why that's why your water committee yeah. is, has been tasked with that to find these answers. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what we're going to do, and we're working with with uh, these people that think that that uh, these ditches here need to be dug out and stuff like that, uh, going through land and water conservation and they're gonna speak to it. So that's what we have about recycling and solid waste. Uh, it's kind of iffy yet on the solid waste program. If, you know, I mean on the, uh, having choose to reuse, uh, we'll be getting out our flyers on that. Okay. So, okay. Anything else? Anybody got any questions on that? I sent you all a copy in a minute. Plan Commission, Patty, update. Quick. Yeah, so we met last night and uh, we had uh, the chiropractic approval, the land subdivision that we had this evening, um, and then we had a chicken permit, and then we also have um, for our next meeting, which was on. Um, the people were unable to attend last night, so it's on for next month's meeting, uh, restaurant sale approval. Okay. Um, chicken permit, did that pass? Yes. 
with uh, any comments? Was there? I did receive a letter from somebody that right. was pretty there adamant. There were actually 30, um, 30 letters that were sent out to the nearby neighbors and two, two um, concerned um, residents were um, had sent in their letters or had called, and one of them did attend the meeting last night, and um, it was addressed with their concerns and so. Um, with the way that the, the, just to let you know, from one resident, it was like 150 feet away from where the proposed, um, it's not like a close um, not, subdivision. I, no, oh, I, I know, know that, that was why we had yeah. approved it. I'm not we questioning did, anything you do. No, I don't take it that way at all. Okay. But it was just, um, that was why it was approved. Anything else? Questions? Uh, public buildings? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, public buildings. Yeah, we did have the spray done, and, and we had that approved by the board because that was taken out of the minutes, I guess. And, um, and I don't know, I called the chairman of the committee, and I don't know, she, I was here most of the time on Sunday when they did it, but I think they did an excellent job. I don't know what the rest of you think. I looked clean, that's all I can say. Yeah. So. And there, there was some painting needs to be done, but yeah. that person don't paint. Don't paint. I know we're still having uh, small animals like... Small animal problems. <laughs> ants. Oh, spider in and out. <laughs> But we'll work on those. I've got some other stuff that's uh, might might work works good for me, and it's not lethal. Hey, Dad, I heard they're coming from the fire station. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't know you were still here. Yeah. <laughs> Legislative didn't meet. Public safety didn't meet. Economic development did meet. Legislative did meet after our. Oh, after yeah, after, we did after yeah. town board. Sorry. I would just say that I, yeah, I gave ahead. yeah. I, so I gave a update on uh, most of what happened at legislative committee. Uh, of course, ATV uh, was the ATV ordinance or uh, use on town roads uh, was uh, a uh, primary agenda item, and uh, the committee then uh, set it forth to uh, the town board now to consider that item through a resolution for referendum. Thank you. Economic development, uh, both of those are unable to be here this evening, so they can uh, follow up with us next month. Mm -hmm. Personnel didn't meet. WTA meeting, uh, I was unable to go. Bill, what was yeah. the exciting part about it? Well, um, I, I give you a copy of the minutes, but I'll go over Jason Gutenberg with uh, a speaker there uh, from planning and zoning. And he spoke on broadband. Uh, just seems like a lot of people are spending money on broadband, and now even the federal government is. But anyways, there's uh, 14 new towers in the county um, on broadband, and most of those are, of course, in the, in the towns. A uh, representative from Tiffany's, and the red, Representative Tiffany was there and gives uh, uh, some good information. Uh, Senator Johnson's office was uh, a person was there speaking there. Amy Sue was there and uh, talking about uh, what's going on with uh, what's his name? Ron Kine. Yeah, the Ron Kine. And I heard today that uh, Ron Kine is not running for right. office. So. Representative Nancy uh, Vandermeer and uh, of course uh, Donna Rosar were there. And they did a very good discussion on what was going on in the legislature. And State Representative Steve Dickinson was there from the Towns Association, and he talked a lot about the upcoming budget, or, or the budget at that time. And uh, upcoming council meeting is uh, in August. It is August. Uh, Oh, I got it here. 
Anyways, it's uh, oh my God, it's this uh, the sixteenth. But I'm saying I, I oh that's the other thing I'm not talking about. Okay, that's the twenty twentieth is the one in September, mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, the next one is August 20th. That's that's what I wanted to tell you. Okay, and that's sh sh yeah. Sherry? Or where is it? Siegel. 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 Town of Siegel. Yes. And that's where and it's going to be held hall? at the town hall. Okay. The town of Siegel. And emergency government will be speaking, I think, at that one. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. That yes. seems to be their routine mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. every two years. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, now there's a new emergency government person, and she'll be speaking at it, yes. I, I'd like to just report about the Citizens Groundwater Committee meeting that was held. Um, it, it was, uh, I believe I sent you out, it's very lengthy, but I'll just touch on it. This time we had the federal, federal uh, senator, what's her name, from, you know, think of it. Um, Tammy Baldwin, yeah, she she uh, sent a representative there talking about it and uh, trying to get some money for the improvement of drinking water, groundwater, and that went on. It just to let you know that the next meeting is going to be held on, and I, I can't make it, and I would hope that you would. Somebody, it's going to be August 16th at 2 o'clock, and it's going to be virtual. I mean, you can go to the meeting. It's in room 214 uh, in the courthouse, but it's also virtual. If, if you want to appoint somebody to go to that, because I don't think Jamie or you, you can't go to that, can you? No, I was just looking at my um, no. calendar, and that's a Monday, and I work no. during the day. And no, and Jeremy could attend it. He may be able to. Yeah, it, he can do it virtually, things like that. So I like to see somebody attend because there's going to be uh, uh, three different speakers at it, and they're from uh, the University of Wisconsin. One of them. It's a very informational can, can meeting. Have, I hope you. Can you get the link for that and have Lisa send it out? Yes, yes, I will. Yes. So. Okay. Okay. Any help? No, that's what I have. Okay, reports of individual board members. Who wants to go? I can go first. Patty. I had, um, I noticed that there, remember a while back when Bill had brought to our awareness, I want to say maybe oh, a couple yeah. years ago, right. about the wild parsnip, Arson. which is a nauseous weed. Mm -hmm. And I almost think only that we, in Portage County and Wood County. Right, but, but it's it not almost statewide. seems like it's on Washington Street. Uh, so, what, whereabouts? Because the crew has sprayed some, we have one yeah. subdivision that historically gets it mm -hmm. in one of the drainage. Yeah. It's um, right along the ditch of Palo Verde on the north side of the of Washington Horse Street. Street. Right. On their side? Yes, on their side. I'll have a so you, if you go in there, and one of the things too, it's either that or it could be one other weed that I thought, you know, that I got notification on. Um, it might be that. I'm not familiar. I, you know, I, that's not my expertise. You almost have to take a picture of the leaf and check it yeah. out. Yeah, but they were saying that it's important not, if it's this other weed, it's important not to mow it because that's how the seeds are spread. So yeah. that ditch has not been mowed yet. So this is a perfect time to spray it if that's the case. Sure. Thank you. Go ahead. No, I don't have anything except the legislative meeting. Okay. That issue. Okay, then what I wanted to update you on is uh, obviously I've attended a uh, meeting that's called the Urban Roads Committee meeting. It's made up of uh, chairmen or presidents or, or members of each of the town, cities, and villages in our area, and it includes Town of Grant, is in this uh, map of the area. And if you can remember a couple of years ago, I indicated to to us folks that we were able to insert some more of Grand Rapids property roads, collector roads, into that mapping system so we are available for funds. What the, what the process is, once we get the notice, uh, 
communities that have a project in mind that they're wishing to get DOT partial funding for, they need to present their case. And, and as there, there was uh, basically no prepared uh, projects other than the City of Wisconsin Rapids project, which uh, forget which one it was right offhand here now, but um, Jackson's, Jack's, part of Jackson Street. Mm. And uh, that did get approval. That doesn't mean they're going to get the project by no means. It means that they have the rights to ask for some state funding for it. But like I said, every every couple of years this, this committee will be one day and then uh, the, takes the projects in order of how they were ranked. And so it's a community vote by by the committees. Mm. So the thing about it is uh, if you're if we're interested in doing a project like this, we should uh, look at a project and work towards that so we have some of the cost figures because you need to have pretty much a good estimate for it in order to be eligible. Mm -hmm. I would think it's pretty much Grand Rapids turned in to get one of those urban projects now that we have some roads that actually could fall within that project. Right. Hmm, interesting. I can think of two right off the bat. Yeah, <laughs> I think I can too. Anything else? Uh, future agenda items, and Bill, you had that referral for your... Oh, you missed public input. Oh, there we go. 21, public, people wish to address the board limited to two minutes each. Public input uh, not to exceed 12, 16 minutes. Why we chose that number, I don't know. Anybody else wish to speak? <laughs> Hearing on uh, 22 future agenda items, we have one referral, correct? Right. Item 23, Grand Rapids Town Board move into closed session. Since the statute is 1985, print one, print C, consider applying for motion, compensation, or performance evaluation standard of any public board which the government body has jurisdiction or exercise responsibility. Wisconsin Code 1985, print one, print E, delivering and negotiating whatever committed or bargaining reason for right. our closed session. With the purpose of discussing contract negotiations and strategies regarding Town of Grand Rapids WPPA represented employees and negotiate with WPPA regarding assessing their collective bargaining agreement. 